but I want to start by making this focus today an energetic one. And the main thing to focus on is, of course, the nature of energy, because it seems like one of the main hot topics right now is the nature of reality and really understanding the mind-bending nature of reality in a more subjective way. A lot of people are arguing, you know, is there even an objective reality? It's the age-old question. And you have a lot of reductionistic people saying that, of course, there is an objective reality. There is no way to perceive consciousness or source in a separate way. And so the reductionistic thinkers are always inclined to believe that reality is full of separate constructs that have a solid, resolute meaning. And so we can't really change that definition to observe our own subjective realities. But from the energetic perspective, of course, everything is variable. There is no one reality. Everything is perceived through an individual perspective. And so my first challenge to all of you is to really think about, do you perceive reality in a solid, fixed way, or do you see it through a subjective lens? Are you aware that your reality is purely your subjective reality that you are perceiving? Which means that everything that you call real is coming through a lens of biased assumption, through your conditioning, through your programming, through what you think you know about reality. And arguably, you and I perceive reality in an entirely different way. There's no way to know for sure that you and I see even certain fixed constructs in an identical manner, because there's always this aspect of the experience which is just based on prior assumptions. It's the meaning that you assign everything happening in a subconscious manner that determines the way that everything appears to you. And so the deeper question then is, what things are you currently battling, which you believe is part of your reality that is unchanging or maybe cannot be fixed by you, that actually is a constituent of your individual perspective? Maybe that thing is just something that you are more solidly attached to in a way that then evokes resistance. And this brings us to the deeper questions of the things that we might be in resistance to that we think are in reality that cannot be changed by us. For example, an illness, certain factors that are outside of our conscious control that we believe we don't have the free will to even change. How do we know for sure that that is the case? The deeper layer then is thinking about why do we think that these things cannot change in our reality? Because as soon as we attach the layer of the resistance to what is, we find ourselves perpetuating that resistance. And so what I want to draw your attention to is the subtle layer of the energetic definition that you prescribe all these different variables in your reality, whether you like them or you don't. Because whatever you give a meaning to, a fixed definition, a label, or something else that you decide is real in a kind of pervasive way, that's going to maintain its status in your reality. And if you want certain things to change, you have to first think about what are you assigning as this real definite label in your reality that you want to have change and change that meaning, change the definition, change the energy that you prescribe a certain thing to change its significance to you. And so the first thing to think about is how do you even relate to energy itself? We can think about energy as this superfluid medium, which is just the substrate of experience. It's all around us. It's something that we can be actively touching, moving inside of our bodies, experiencing through every interaction, relationship, and really seeing in a more conscious way. And that relationship ends up changing everything. And so one of the things I love to, to experience personally and always suggest for people to do is to actually start to feel energy, to think about, like, if you can't be in touch with energy, start to experience it, move it between your hands, actually have a relationship with the energy all around you and start to play with this concept. So for example, there might be something currently stored within your body as some negative experience, which energetically holds a more dense energetic construct. This could be an energy of resistance to a certain thing or a suppressed emotion or just something that you feel is antagonistic and at play in your inner world that you don't have a relationship to. Take that thing and actually start to play with it. Start to experience it. Start to see how does that energy feel when you move your awareness into it and instead of trying to fight it, you actually try to understand it. Because as soon as you start to understand energy, stagnation, resistance, or anything else that feels like a detrimental or oppositional factor of play, you start to transmute it. And so that's the key to understanding energetic movement. As soon as you start to lean your awareness into the energy at play, you start to unravel its coding. You start to move it simply by shifting your awareness into that particular theme, which if it's resistance, it starts to be moved into a space of deep understanding. You start to decode what that energy is actually holding as a deeper meaning. And so try to take, for example, a negative suppressed emotion and like move it into your outer experience. Start to experiment. What is that energy trying to speak through you? What is it trying to communicate? And if that's something that feels resistant, try to move into a space of being a loving observer and then try to understand what is that energy actually trying to explain to you through its presence. 
think the really deep place we can get with this kind of understanding is seeing that that energy is a fractal of something bigger. It's part of an energetic program, which may or may not be something that we even construed. It could be something that we inherited through a subconscious belief system, through something that we inherited through our lineage. Perhaps it's a program that was entrained in your consciousness due to a parent, something you were taught in school, or a learned response perhaps as a coping mechanism to trauma or to past experience. The more that you start to analyze your energy and these programs which might be filling your inner world in a separate way, as if you're looking at those programs in a super conscious kind of a perspective, the more you start to relate to them consciously. And what this really starts to look and feel like is you're stepping into the perspective of source, source consciousness, the creator itself, because you're looking at everything in this top-down manner, which is how consciousness actually organizes itself on a universal basis. So try to take this situation, which could be something that any of us experience in a way that is sudden. It could be a death. It could be a sickness. It could be something that happens which we don't feel that we consciously could have ever chosen. That thing you want to immediately resist. The ego finds no reason to love or accept such a condition. But let's say you have to force yourself or encourage yourself to be in the situation that source consciousness would be in or move into the feeling that your higher self would embody if it's realizing that it's choosing this particular experience. The first thing that you have to go through is an allowing of the experience. You gradually shift it into acceptance by realizing that this thing that's happening is occurring for a reason. And that's simply because it's actually happening in the physical. One of the easiest ways to surrender is just to realize that whatever is occurring already is a collapsing of the wave function of probabilities. It's already happening in experience, which means it's happening for some evolutionary reason. And the only way to deal with that thing in a loving way is to allow it to exist. And then to start to shift into the awareness of the why. How is this experience actually helping you attain a certain deeper lesson, a certain deeper understanding? In this particular case, it's something happening with another human being. That person is not you. It's some experience that you need to observe and kind of love into yourself by integrating the reason for it. Very often, it's tricky to assume responsibility for somebody else's experience or to understand why is that thing happening for them. But we have to also accept that everybody's journey is their own. It's leading to their evolutionary process, which means that part of our own functioning in this is to allow those journeys to occur simultaneously to our own. We don't have the free will to decide for other people, but by choosing to resist their experience, we are just creating that opposition within our own field. So the goal here is to, first of all, just allow that experience to occur and to realize that it's teaching a deeper lesson to both that individual and to you through the process of acceptance. And if we can find a way to assume the perspective of love, even amid that chaos, we find a way to upgrade within our own emotional experience. That's taking us from an experience of being just against what is, into an experience of higher order reasoning, which allows for us to surrender by just allowing it to happen and then to realize that there's deeper learning there, which can only be assumed when you're actually in a frequency of love. So that's kind of the quantum jump that's necessary. It's choosing to not create more emotional trauma by resisting what currently is. And that then allows you to heal through the process of acceptance. That's the thing that you need to guide yourself through by just allowing the experience to be the way that it is. And it reduces the strain emotionally on you as the observer, because in that point in time, you start to realize as a fractal of source, you're both creating the observation, you're creating the response within yourself, and you're in essence creating the even simulated reality, which is allowing you to go through these emotional motions. So that is what I would recommend in terms of choosing to not polarize even more when a certain emotional experience is happening. Feel it, allow it to happen, Allow yourself to surrender by understanding it's happening for good reason. And the only way to understand the why is to actually allow yourself to be that observer in the situation. So of course it's easier said than done, but it's something that requires a deep somatic, I feel integration of that learning. So that's something that is energetic practice that we can train ourselves to do. One of the very powerful techniques I also recommend for people is to choose to go completely inside yourself whenever you're going through something very polarizing. So when there's an emotional experience, instead of choosing to detach from it or distract yourself or do something that leads you away from what you're currently going through, try to go so deeply into the emotion that you allow almost like a supernova to occur within your physical being. Go through whatever it is, whether it's grief or resistance or fear. Allow yourself to be consumed by the emotion so that you can actually allow it to work its way through you and then eliminate the need to fragment from it. 
because the most of the trauma that we experience is simply because we choose to distance ourselves from the root cause of the particular originating emotional experience. This means that the way to really integrate an emotion is to allow yourself to associate with it, to join forces, to understand why is it occurring, and then allow it to go through you and to not become a permanent part of your experience. So something that I often recommend is listen to music to understand the emotion. Whenever I'm personally going through something that feels emotional, I love to tune into it. I love to let myself resonate with whatever emotional state is in my field. So it becomes like a, like a song that you experience, but then that song ends and then you kind of find yourself peacefully allowing it to be in the backdrop of your reality. It's something that provides a transient experience of beingness, wherein your identity is not something fixed to the emotional experience and you're not resisting or battling anything. You're allowing yourself to just be the observer of it, kind of like there's a a megaphone of consciousness in the background of your reality, you're allowing whatever noise to be experienced as if you're you know, in a bustling city and you hear the chaotic backdrop, but you're not actually fighting the noise. You're just kind of flowing through it, allowing it to be in that backdrop, but not allowing yourself to be in any way hijacked because of this chaotic experience. So that's what I always recommend. Kind of allow yourself to be feeling this experience, realize that you are just that, you're the experiencer of this reality. And just like source, you can be the omniscient kind of presence, the observer that's allowing things to come and go like a transient thought would. And then realize the observer perspective is that of sheer presence and just choosing to assume a new kind of definition of consciousness and source in any moment. So then the next level to this that I suggest is to think about, since you have this relationship to conscious energy, which can form through your awareness, what can you now imbue as a new energetic program in your reality? And you can literally start to play with this. Like I said, you can create an energetic ball, for example, and start to nourish yourself with a new kind of energetic experience. Play with those higher frequency emotions, and that will actually support your uplifting into this higher octave of conscious awareness. Start to feel into, for example, if you want a new program of, let's say, abundance in your reality, what does that abundance feel like? What kind of frequencies do you need to entertain internally to train yourself to correspond to a new energetic program of abundance? The reason why I keep showing my hands is because this could be something that you actually play with and experience as first a separate program to you, but that you start to actually individuate with and experience within yourself. You can start to play with these loving frequencies, anything that allows you to experience a state of alignment, a state of achieving something externally, which first needs to emanate from within yourself and actually bring yourself into resonance with that condition. But the first thing to do is to understand what does that new program look like? What does it feel like? What is it that you want to be experiencing in your reality that you realize needs to begin from within? Because that's the main function of consciousness. It's of course a mirror. And so whatever definition you want to be experiencing in your external reality needs to begin from you. And so you need to start to feel what is that new thing actually gonna allow you to experience internally? And that will then start to illuminate as well. What are the splits within you that don't allow you to hold that particular frequency? This is really deep energetic work which can unfold naturally and over some time because as you start to realize what levels of consciousness you wanna be experiencing in your reality, you become more aware of what is stopping you from being in that dimension from your inner standpoint. What's keeping you from being there? Is it a certain emotional experience? Is there some trauma that you feel like you cannot let go of? Is there any resistance that you currently perceive that you think is maybe separate from you? And allow yourself to be guided into the perspective of integration by again reminding yourself, You're a fractal of source, which means your physical being is simply an energetic blueprint. It's a template which is changing from one moment to the next, which again explains why quantum jumping and moments of spontaneous transcendence are possible. Because as soon as you radically change this energetic definition of who you are, what programs you decide to entertain, you change the makeup of your inner world. You change vibrational states. You allow yourself to perceive reality in a totally different way as soon as you perceive in this oneness kind of perspective. And so really, it's entirely up to you. It's also something that is illuminated in the field of epigenetics, which I love so much and I think is a really good explanation for these concepts, because the more that we ruminate on the potentials that are fixed in our even genetic blueprint, and we think that we cannot escape because maybe something passed down in our family, or maybe it's just a historic kind of representation that we're feeling and reliving in our subconscious minds, we feel there is no way to transcend a program nature of the self. But then that self really is something that is another program. I mean, this that's really as essential if we think about the concept of the self really is just an illusion. There is no true fixed self. The self is just a definition, a word in the dictionary that somebody decided to prescribe some meaning to. As soon as you give that self a new kind of meaning, it could be 
more health, more coherence, more abundance. You can break any kind of generational pattern by assuming the responsibility of that pattern breaker and creating a new definition which allows the self to transcend and to evolve into a higher archetype. And so that brings us to this understanding of also the higher self, which is an archetype of freedom, fluidity. It's the soul in physical form. And that soul is the closest that we can really get to, I think, to the understanding of source, because the soul is unbound by these human constructs and egoic definitions, which are limited in nature. So think about what would your soul want you to be experiencing in the human form? And how does or maybe how doesn't yourself currently entertain those possibilities? If there's anything you currently believe is attached to your definition of self, which can be an interesting exercise to also do to think about what is yourself to write down those qualities, traits, characteristics, which are keeping you in a certain box of conforming to your physical identity. Are those things actually conducive to your growth, to your evolution, to your frequency of love? Or are those things binding you to certain distorted programs, keeping you stuck to either generational trauma or conditioning or different patterns which are actually keeping you in an attached loop? So this is the aspect that is entirely up to us. As soon as we see these elements and patterns, we realize there is the opportunity to break whatever cycle, to introduce whatever new program and definition to make ourselves feel free.